to the Lord. Let's stand and sing, friend of God. Man, are you a friend of God this morning? I pray that you've had a wonderful weekend and uh, and that you have enjoyed this pretty weather. But I hope that you came this morning with something a little more important on your mind. Amen. Worshiping the Lord. We're gonna take just a moment. Do we have any prayer requests on my left? In the middle. Am I right? Praise the Lord. Uh, remember one of Logan's uh, friends, his family, uh, is David Haskell. We've been praying for uh, passed away over the weekend. Um, leaves behind uh, a wife and, and two small children. Um, so just pray that God would help them through this, through the services. But uh, in the days to come, pray that God would look over them and, uh, and take care of their needs. Uh, also. Several other unspoken requests I have. Do y'all have any unspoken requests this morning? Man, God sees and knows each and every need this morning. Let's uh, let's ask God that God would just move in a mighty way on these requests, that He would touch this service. I would like to see God just go ahead and pour out this service, the next service, Sunday school, just like He did on Wednesday night. Amen. God moved, and I'm looking forward to continuing to stay in the flow. Amen. That's up to us. If we come expecting the flow to happen, if we come expecting the move of God to take place, let's just go to the Lord together in prayer this morning and ask God that He would pour out and meet these needs. Father God, Lord, we come before you once again this morning, Father, and we ask you, Lord, that you would just touch God. God, that you would reach down, Lord. Lord, move on the broken, God. God, I pray that you would touch this family, God who has lost a loved one. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would just minister and move on their their needs, God. God, I pray that you would take care of these boys, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, God, that there would be some men of God step up, Lord, Lord, to these sons. Father, I pray that you would just move, Lord, Lord, in this service, God. God, that you would meet the needs, Lord, of the unspoken request, Father. God, I pray that you would just touch them, Lord, and pour out on them, God. God, we may not know what they are, but you do, Lord, and and they brought them to you, Father. I pray that you would just touch God. 
God, on the music this morning. I pray that you would move on Pastor Darren, God. God, I pray that you would just have your way in this service, God. God, that you would just let us feel your presence, God. Let us see your works, Father. God, I pray that each and every life, God, God would feel something and leave change this morning, Lord. We come expecting a move, God. God, and I know, Lord, that you'll give us nothing less, Lord, than what we come expecting. Father, I praise you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Worship this morning.
presence fill this place. Let's sing it again together. Hallelujah. Oh, surround me, oh Lord. Is that your prayer this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, surround me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Surround me, Father. Oh, Lord. Yes. Let your presence fill this place. You know, we've been on a, we've been on a flow, as Pastor uh, said this morning when he started talking to us. This morning, it's a different flow. You can feel a, you can feel a difference in the, in the atmosphere. But you know, one thing I thought about when we was getting ready, I, I walked out of the closet into the bathroom and I told Lori, I said, you know what, love is on the move. I said, love is on the move. There's something shaking, there's something moving. I said, but love is on the move. See, see, we, we are surrounded by a world of chaos right now and confusion of, of who am I, what am I, what am I to do right now, how am I to react to this thing. It's got, it's got, it's, it's just a... It's a brand new pandemic. It's something new. But you know what? It's the same thing over and over and over and over again. It's something that we're going to continually see until the Father walks out on that cloud. And he says, hey, Gabriel, son. He said, crank up that horn. He said, let's get this thing started. He said, let's get the, let's get the party going. And, you know, but see, we, we are going to continually face the enemy. We're going to continually face something that we think is bigger than us. But you know what? This morning when I'm standing with my brothers and sisters, we're singing, oh, surround me, Father. See, because when we ask Him just to simply come and surround us, see, what we're asking Him to do is we're asking Him to be our front. We're asking Him to be the tail gunner. We're asking Him to be the, the wingman on the left and the right. And you know what? And all those little places in between, uh, the, in the corners, see, that's what we're asking Him for. We're not asking just for the four sides. We're saying, Lord, all the way around, Father. God, I pray that you would just get in the midst, Father, that you would just stir something up inside me. And, Father, that you would just surround me in your presence. And God, wherever I may be, whether it may be at work or whether it may be sitting on the front row or the back row or whether I'm in my Sunday school class or whether I'm at my men's meeting or my ladies' meeting, Father, God, I'm just asking you, Father, to surround me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All week long, I've just, I've just had to stop. And I've had to be like in Psalms where David just says, See, just take a break. I've, I've had to all week long, I've just been singing in my head this, this simple words. Jesus, 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 God be with me. They're so simple at times that we make so much confusion out of things to where all we have to do is stop and call on His name, Pastor Chris. You know, and it just makes all those things just simply go away. Yesterday I, I was trying to roof my dog lot and I was trying to do all this stuff and it was hot outside and I would forgot that I wasn't 25 still and, and I was pushing my body to places that I shouldn't have been pushing it to and I was trying to make it twist and contort to ways that just don't work no more. And, and I come in the house and I told her, I said, now I've done rolling my dog on ankle, my shoulder's hurting, I'm, I'm just blah, 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 blah. And I got to thinking, I was like, you know what, Lord? You created this body. You have set me on a new season, and I'm going to have to deal with some things on this new season. You know, I made a bold statement last week. I said, there's going to be times when words cannot say. And we're just going to have to sit, and we're just going to have to sit in the stillness, in the quietness of that moment. We're just going to have to hum melodies out of our heart. But see, when I made that statement, I really hadn't thought about the full impact of the statement. And this week, all I've thought about is that statement. See, it's not only the good times that make us stop and say, because there's sometimes that the hard things, Jamie makes us stop and say, but you know what? The hard times make the sweet times so much sweeter Gina so this morning I want to sing it one more time together and we're going to get into it but I, I, I want to invite him 
into the presence. Because see, I felt him when I walked through the back door. I felt him Wednesday night when Pastor Donnie and the Mooresville Church of God filled up the center right there. And we kind of surrounded them. And we worshiped together in community, whether it was from Mooresville or whether it was from Lincoln. And, and, see, and I felt him last Sunday on Pentecost Sunday. And I felt him the Sunday before, on the Sunday before. And, and I see, we are in a move. But to get through this thing and get on the other side, it's going to take us coming together and inviting Him just to simply surround us. So let's sing it together one more time. Simply, simply, simply. Oh, surround me, Father. Hallelujah. God, I love you, Lord. God, surround us. Oh, Lord, surround me, Father. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, surround me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, surround me, oh Lord. Let your presence, oh, let it fill this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, surround, oh, surround us, oh Lord. Do you mean it this morning when you're singing it to Him? Hallelujah, because I do. Hallelujah. See, my life hangs on this thing. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whoa, oh, surround us. Surround us. Oh, Lord. Let your presence. Oh, let it control this place. Hallelujah. That's my prayer this morning, that he would just simply surround us in this place that we are on this new chair. I want to start in Numbers chapter 13. I've, I've been hung in the Israelite children. I've been hung up in David. I've been hung on this journey. I've been hung in this new season. And he's just not letting me go. Last week we talked about walking in the season of anointing. And just simply walking out of the field and walking into that season. And what some of that season meant. But you know, the Lord told me, he said... Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send out for yourself men, so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I am going to give the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their father's tribes, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent for them to the wilderness of Paran, and commanded the Lord all the men who were heads of the sons of Israel. We're going to skip to 17. And when Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, he said to them, Go up. There into the Negev and, and go into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live in it are strong or whether they're weak, whether they're few or whether they're many. How, in, how is the land in which is it they live? Is it good or is it bad? And how are the cities which they live? Are they like open camps or with fortifications? How is the land? Is it fat or is it lean? How is your season? Is it fat or is it lean? How Are, are the trees in it or not? Make an effort then to go get some of the fruit of the land. And now the time was the first time of the grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rib and, and Lehamit. But then when they had gone up into the Negev, they came to Hebron. Where was it? And some other places they went into. But see, but the 25, it says, They came into the valley of Eskel. And from there cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes. And they carried on a pole between two men. I've seen some big clusters of grapes and muscadines, but I've never seen one big enough that I had to absolutely put it on a pole and two of us carry it out of the land. Oh, my. See, they named this land the Valley of Eskel because of the cluster which the sons of Israel cut down from there. I believe that we are fixing the head towards the blessing of the cluster. See, there's something about that grape when it, when it sets on the vine and it just swells and it swells and it swells. And see, that's what our life does. We're sitting there and the Father's just pouring all those nutrients in, into that thing and we're just sitting there. But see, that grape can't remain the grape before it gets too rotten and it becomes the vinegar. See, we've got to do something with the grape. But see, when my grape and my berry is about to bust and we add it to his berry and it's about to bust and we add it to the Gwen's berry and it's about to bust and we all of a sudden we start seeing this cluster happen man what could we do in a blessing of cluster God I ask father that you would just father anoint me as your servant father God you would anoint your word 
God, that you would, Father, just, just take us on this journey together, Father. God, as we traverse, Father, from one season to another. God, as, as we move into new ground, Father, as we move into a new area, Father, as we seize the land, Father. God, I ask, Lord, God, that your will and your way Father, God, that your blood, Father, that we forget sometimes, Father, that was shed on Calvary. Father, that your blood, Father, would cover us, Lord. God, that your blood, Father, would pave the way, Father, it's already done, Lord. That you, Father, would move in our midst. In your name I pray, and we say together, amen. I, I'm intrigued by this story of, of how, how Moses sent them into the land to spy out things, and, and how how they all, you know, all 12 of them had to, to get together and they made this journey together and no doubt on their way to the journey they were, they were camping along and they were moving together as a team and as a group and how they started going into this land and as they went into it they started looking at the hillsides and they started looking at all these places and they started looking down in there and I thought it was funny that he said, he said bring back some of the fruit and, and I got this inside of me and I was like, I said, why are we bringing back the fruit? But see, I noticed one thing about being in this season we have got to, as ourselves, as the Christian people, we're going to have to look into what's to come. See, right, so, so many times we get settled and we get, we get used to our surroundings and, and we get used to being comfortable. Who likes being comfortable? I like being comfortable. I like my lawnmower seat to be comfortable. I like my tractor seat. I like my living room seat. I don't go and sit down in chairs and say, oh, this one hurts my back. That's the one I want. No. I mean, I go sit in a pile of them, and if I sit in one waiting on while Lori's shopping, if I sit in a comfortable seat, I'm like, I'm going to try the other one. I'm going to find me somewhere where I can be. But see, in our walk with God so many times, that's where we find ourselves, Elizabeth. We, we find that comfortable place. We find that place to say, oh yeah, I can feel him right here and I can feel enough of him to feel, Pastor, that, that I don't need no more. I'm just going to hang tight right here. And that's the dangerous spot to be. Because see, everywhere I read in this story, Moses is continually pushing the people forward. Every time they get disgusted and dissatisfied and they say, why did you bring us out of Egypt? Why did we start cutting the lights out in the sanctuary? Why did we cancel Sunday night service? Why did we? Because it was time to get out of the ordinary and move into the extraordinary. And see, what things have blown our minds up to this point and how the church and how the Christian life has, has rolled. And, and all of a sudden, we're, and then now the things that blew our mind is the ordinary. And that's where I find it amazing. What is next? What's on the other side? And see, see, Moses said, it's time to send in the spies. We're going to see what this thing is. And they got inside there, and they started digging. They started looking at it. And, you, and he said, one thing I want you to tell you, he said, is it a lean land or is it a fat land? See, in our seasons, there's times of leanness. There's times where it's painful. There's times where we say, I did not see that coming. I, I, I didn't see that on my peripheral vision. That one truly got me in the back of the ear. And, and the only way we knew it got us is because we felt the pain of the season. But see, the one thing about the pain of the season is going to produce fruit of the season. But see, somebody had been planting grapevines. Somebody had been, had been tilling the soil. Somebody knew something about the land. And Moses said, let's go see what we got to do and bring me back some of the fruit. I believe when, when Joshua and Caleb... And the other ten, when they walked in there, I believe they were sitting there. They, I think they were like, kind of like me. I think they're used to seeing clusters of grapes big enough that you just kind of pick up a cluster and you say, man, that's awesome. You throw them in a basket and you can fill the basket full of those clusters. And, and you know what to use that for. And you know what you can do with it. You know you can make wine. You know you can make jelly. You know you can make jams. You know you can make pies. You know, and they knew all the uses. They knew they could make vinegar. All the things that the, the grapes represented to them. Everything that they could make out of it, I knew. But when they seen this cluster of grapes, I think they all had to stop and like, and sh you know, just kind of scratch their hands like, what in the world? is that I think there was a time to where one of them just, you know you, you've seen in cartoons to where the little animal always kind of approaches the big thing and they just kind of sniff it a little bit and they, they rub on it a little bit you know, and it's kind of cute the way they encounter the new thing but I believe these grown men they were valiant warriors I mean they were they were the chosen they were the tops of the tribes they, they were those men and when they walked into that new season they walked up to that new vine and they seen this cluster they said this is going to blow their mind. 
what I started out saying is, sometimes we're going to encounter some things that are going to simply take our breath. We're going to simply say, what do I do with this? And we're going to say that two different ways. We're going to say it as in, how am I going to make it through this? And then we're going to say, God has absolutely dumped a man-sized blessing on me, and how am I going to contain this? See, but somewhere between there is where we are. See, because I realized something for a couple years now, Pastor. There's been preachers preach on this pulpit. They've stood behind this sacred desk and they've proclaimed some big stuff over this congregation and over this community of believers. There's been some big things said about us and there's been some big prophecies laid out there that where we're going is going to be crazy. If you remember the last revival we had, he encouraged several of us to do it like we've never done it before, like it's our last chance. It's your last chance. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that night where he testified where God got a hold of him and told him, you've got to do it like never before. This is your last chance. When he told those words to me and he said, you're going to have to do it like it's your last chance. I didn't really realize what that meant. I was like, Lord, I think I'm going at it hardcore. I think I'm going at it strong. But since then, something gave birth in my season. Because see, I've been... Uncontent. I've been unhappy. I've been, I've been restless on the inside. And right about the time my restlessness was really cranking up, here came all this mess coming down the corner. And I feel it's the same as me and you. It's the same as, as all of us. We were on a path. We were on a, we were on a mission. We were on a flow. Uh, we, we, were, we were doing crazy things. We were doing big things. We, were, we had the steam. We had the roll going. We were making big plans for outreaches. We were making big plans for, to see how we could win this harvest. And all of a sudden, the brakes hit. And then somebody snatched the emergency brake. And we had to start doing things a whole lot different. But I realized something about this day, this season of difference. We started reaching more people than we've ever reached before. All of a sudden, a little cluster of grapes become a cluster that we was having to carry together. We, we, we were, all of a sudden, we were seeing people, we were seeing people give that didn't even, didn't even know us. They were saying, I'm going to get behind that cluster and I'm going to see what they make of it. So this morning, what I want to ask you is, what are you prepared to make of the cluster? I've had some text messages over the past couple weeks, and it says they've been saying, you know, you know, Darren, I'm going to do things like I've never done it before. I, I made a promise to, to, to the Father that, that when we come back, it's going to be like it's never been in my life before. I want to ask you this morning, what are you prepared to do with the cluster? Because I believe... We're headed to a season of great things, a big cluster. But see, in between that, there's going to be some things that we're going to have to overcome because any time that change comes and seasons start to go from, 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 from fall into winter, you've got to be prepared for what the new season is going to do inside yourself. See, you've got to start taking that deep reflection on the inside. And you've got to start looking and seeing what the heart holds. And you've got to start looking and see, how am I looking at this? How am I perceiving this? How am I? What's my vision uh, telling me? Am I behind the vision? Or am I driving my own agenda? But see, that's what these men had, had, had to do right here in Numbers. They had to decide, are we together or are we separate? So I believe when they picked up that big cluster, man, they were carrying that thing. I think they was like, hey, let me carry it a little while. Let me, let me carry, let me, come on, let me get on the stick, man. And I think there was a, you know, I think, okay, man, you know, but I want to be the one to carry it into Moses. I, I want to be the guy that carries it into the, into the, in the, in the camp to where everybody says, ooh, look at that. But see, I believe they, they, they carried this thing all the way and they was like, man, that is crazy. That is huge, you know. Well, all of a sudden it says they returned to the camp and then when they returned from spying out the land at the end of the 40 days, they proceeded to come to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at the Kadesh. And they brought back the word to show them, and to all the congregation showed them the fruit of the land. Thus they told him and said, We went into the land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey. And they said, This is its fruit. Jesus. But this is where it gets crazy. They said, But neither... The less. The people who live in the land, they are strong. In the cities, they are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. 
Amalek is living in the land of Nagav, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites are living in the hill country, and the Canaanites are living by the sea, by the side of Jordan. Now these men just brought in a single cluster of grapes that they had to bear on one another just to get it back into camp. And all of a sudden, the change of the seasons, something happened inside of them, and ten of them split off and said, but wait just a minute. How many times inside of our lives have we been on that steamroller? Have we been headed to victory? Have we been plowing the field? We've been laying them off the rows off straight. We've been planting them as we go. We've been making sure everything's on track. And all of a sudden we get to a place to where we don't understand how we're going to move through to the other side. And all of a sudden, I'm preaching to myself here because I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I'm a pessimist. I, I see the bad things. I, I, I see the things that, that, and I, that that's just me. But, but see, I'm not the only one. But see, all of a sudden we get to this place and we say, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. Their cities are huge. See, see, they're fortified. They've got walls. They've got armies. They've got stuff blocking the way. See, see, I mean, they're giants down there. It goes on to say, man, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. And fear took over. James 3 talks about the power of the tongue. It talks about how we bridle the horse and how the rudder being so small steers, steers the big ships. And it talks about how as a little flicker of a flame can start a forest fire. And see right here, this is where we've got to, this is where we've got to really watch ourselves. But see, because we live in a society where freedom of speech has absolutely took over every other freedom. See, I realized one thing this morning. While I'm sitting here giving you God's Word, you can be on your phone on, on, on Facebook or you can be on, on, on a TikTok or Twitter or, or all these other things. I, I understand that you can be absolutely just ripping me a new one right now. So, so it makes it hard sometimes to, to give the cold hard truth because we have never lived in such an informative, communicative time as we are right now. And that's why I've got to stop and say, you know, James told us, watch that little muscle. Because the one that all is, and it goes on to say, all the other animals have been tamed. But fresh water and salt water cannot come from the same vein. It's one or the other. And I've got to caution us all the way over YouTube, all the way over Facebook land. I caution us from coast to coast. Everybody watching, everybody assembling. I've got to caution us that this is a time to where we really have to censor ourselves. As a body of people that proclaim to know the King and proclaim to know the Maker and proclaim to know the Master of the Seas, this is not a time for us to get caught up in opinion and an agenda. But this is a time for us to get caught up in a holy moment and stand behind our pastors and stand behind pastors all over that have a vision for the house. See, because God set this thing up as a hierarchy. He set it up as, 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 as a shepherd. And He set it up as we as sheep are to fall up under this shepherd because sometimes when the shepherd feels the need to discipline the sheep, they got to break their leg and carry them on their shoulders to get them back in line and make sure they stay in with a flock. See, sometimes it don't feel good when we really gauge our life on this Word right here. Sometimes the Word will absolutely choke you because it's a hard pill to swallow. And that's what's going on right now. But see, but there is always some of God's people on the move. And in verse 30, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses said. And I don't think he screamed and shouted. I, I, don't th I think Caleb and Joshua both had, had a presence about themselves when they spoke. I think people just, just kind of just came to them. I, I think Caleb said, hey, hey, I, I was there too. I, I, I walked every step these other ten made. I, I, I actually took my, my blade and I cut the cluster. I, I felt its weight on my shoulder. But I also saw those big boys walking around down there. See, we've got to get the mindset of Caleb and Joshua. 
I'm going to read it to you. It said, Then Caleb cried to the people before Moses said, We should by all means. That means everything within us. I think Caleb here was singing a little bit of surround. I think he was like, Surround me, Father, because I'm fixing this. I'm fixing to put it out there. He said, We should by all means go up and take possession of it. For we will surely overcome it. Sometimes our seasons are like a boat anchor. And they just drag, and we just work. we we get tired of pulling that season, and we 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 get we get hard pressed to try to come out of one and into another. I was having a conversation last Sunday evening, and somebody brought it to mind. They said, "Hey, our Sunday school lesson, uh, something about a Sunday school lesson, talking about how Joshua and Caleb had to watch everything, and how they still remained strong." And it got inside my spirit. And I said, "Man, that's where I've been all over." But you know, you think about it. Joshua and Caleb, Chris, had to watch Moses lose the promised land Joshua and Caleb were there when Korah raised the rebellion out of the midst of the camp and he was coming against and they, Joshua and Caleb watched the ground open up and swallow up Korah in his rebellion Joshua and Caleb watched multiple plagues plague the children of Israel Joshua and Caleb you know what they also saw they also saw the Red Sea roll back See, Joshua and Caleb, they also saw some crazy stuff happen and something somewhere in their mind said, you know what, my God was big enough to get me through this. There's nothing that He's not going to get me on the other side of. So when I walk into a land of giants and I feel like a grasshopper, all of a sudden I pray, God, let it be Jurassic Park style and let the creatures overtake the, the, the mess. So I have to ask you, in this journey, in the day and time we live, where are you? Man, that's, 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 a hard, that's a hard thing to digest sometimes. Because, see, so many times we like to hide behind things. We like to hide behind our family members. We like to hide behind, here it goes, our ministry because it's a J-O-B. It, it becomes that job. That's why I show up to church. I show up to church because, you know, it's, and, and I'm, just, I'm, I'm not picking on anybody. I show up to church because I'm going to play the piano this morning. I'm going to sing a little ditty. I show up because I'm going to peck on the drums and I'm going to keep it in harmony. I'm going to try to I'm going to roll it out, it like you know. And I and I'm going to show up and I'm going to do my guitar thing, but I ain't going to do nothing else. I'm going to go a little step deeper. I'm going to get up in front of the people because I can I can I can I can talk a little bit and I'm going to I'm going to read a little bit of God's word and I'm going to give some opinion about some things. And, and you know what? And wherever it lays, it lays. I'm going to show up because I'm the youth pastor. Because, you know, say, I take care of his kids. I'm going to show up because I got a little thing called the, the splash. You know, I'm just going to do my splash, but I ain't going to do no more. See, I'm going to show up and I'm going to sit on the fourth row because that's where I always sit. And how dare anybody come sit in my neighborhood? What? But I, I'm serious. That's what we happens when we become complacent in our season. All of a sudden... It's like a bunch of grasshoppers hopping around not knowing where they're headed. And that's exactly what had happened. But because ten of the men went the other way, God's chosen people ended up wandering around in a desert for 40 years, suffering. And Joshua and Caleb had to watch it all. Their leader, who was a strong man of God, where the Bible says when he died, there was never another like him. Himself got aggravated at more of it with the water, and he and he he lost it. And because he lost it, before he died, he got to stand on the mountainside and gaze over into the promised land. But see, you know one thing, I, when I started looking at it, I was, and, and I started kind of studying, you know, but after Moses lost it, he wrote Deuteronomy. In chapter 28, where he said, Blessed shall we be in the field. And he says, We're the head and not the tail. See, even when he knew that he couldn't get there, he had to pull himself up because, you know, sometimes in our seasons, we don't see how we're going to get there. We don't see how we're going to achieve peace and equality. We don't know how we're going to get to this place in humanity. See, we don't see how we're going to get over viruses and flus and pox and, and this and that and the other. We, excuse me. We don't know how we're going to get to where God's got us going. But sometimes we have to just stop 
and remember the Red Sea. I think Moses was already singing the song, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. See, I done fought that season on the backside of the desert when God called me to go get the children of Israel out of Egypt, Janine. See, I've done fault that, that, that season, and I've already left that season, and I know what season is coming. And, and, and I believe that at times he said, you know what, I may have messed up, and I may not be able to take these people inside the promised land, but God's got Joshua, and God's got Caleb that have a tenacity about themselves that they say, I am not giving up. See, I say, we can take this if y'all will just simply get behind me. And I want to stand here this morning and tell each and every one of you, we can absolutely take this if you will get on your feet and you will stand united like the, like the muck sock that I talked about a couple weeks ago and you say, you know, inside my rosette nothing can penetrate. We're going to back ourselves up back to back, shoulder to shoulder and I'm going to trust the God of heaven that He's going to surround me and He is going to be my foreguard. He's going to be the flame behind me and He's going to catch all of the little pieces inside the corners. See, I've made a new commitment. I've made a new commitment to all of you. I've made a new commitment to my pastor. I've made a new commitment to, to our, our music team. I, I've made a new commitment to our youth leaders. I've made a new commitment church-wide. Whether you hold a position or not, I've made a new commitment. That I'm going to cover you in prayer, like it or not. And you say, that's, that's what's weird. No, 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 no. See, I remember times where I told my mother, quit praying for me. You're making me miserable. I can't shake this mess. Even when I didn't want it, I would walk in the door and I would hear her in the back bedroom praying, calling out for her children, calling out for her church, and I never could understand it. I was like, man, what are you doing? It's the Joshua Caleb mentality. They've seen victory. They've seen the promised land and they had enough of the promised land stuck down inside of them. See, last Sunday, see, something, something it happened again. God showed up. And if you missed last Sunday and you missed being in the presence of God, you missed something good. But see, because see, something good started and the flow that Pastor was talking about this morning continued to flow. Music, if you'll start to come up. See, that flow started to kind of flow and something crazy started going on and people's lives started being changed and the Spirit of God was real. He got real, real oily. He got real messy. He got real anointed. And people was walking in the anointing. People that normally don't come was coming and they was getting, getting inside that oil. But see, Wednesday night we showed back up and Pastor Donnie started preaching from the same places me and Pastor have been preaching for the past three weeks. He dug right back in there not knowing anything. He told me after church, he said, he said that's the craziest thing. I've never preached where I preached Wednesday night. He said, that was total new sermon, total new uh, word for me. I didn't know where I was going. He said, but it sounds like I was in the right place. I said, man, you were all over it. His people heard it. Our people heard it. And if we mix together, we're that much stronger. See, that, that's, that's one thing I started thinking about. If all 12 of the tribes, at that point, after Caleb quieted the people, and gave the chance, hey, let's, let's, let's do this thing, they could have saved themselves generations of pain. They could have saved themselves trouble down the line. They could have saved a whole lot of hurt. And they would have simply said, you know what? We're going to walk into a blessing of cluster. See, the one thing about the cluster that I can't get out of my mind is there is so many berries ready to bust. Last Sunday morning, I told Christy Pendleton when she came down, and God just put it on beside my spirit, and I didn't realize what was happening at the time because I hadn't, I hadn't read into the story like this. I told her, I said, I said, I've been waiting for this berry to bust. Because when you raise children to give prayer requests like he gives, to stand as boldly as he stands and say, Hey, I know if I, if I say this loud enough, everybody's going to pray for this stuff. And he's a bold little fella. I had him in boys club six weeks before I retired. He is a very bold little guy. 
bold in everything. He's bold in the way he loves. He's bold in the way he prays for things. He's bold in the size of faith that he has. His mustard seed looks like an ostrich egg. The kid has got something to give. And he knows at his young age that I cannot go back. Stand with me all over. Jesus. See, in Numbers 32, the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad had exceedingly large number of livestock. So when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that indeed a suitable place for livestock, they went to Moses and they said, Moses, let us stop here. Moses, let us raise, let us stop here. Let us just settle here. We ain't got to go no further. We like it. Our livestock will, will prosper. We can see beautiful things coming. And Moses said, it's because of this mindset that we have just been where we were for the past 40 years. It is because of you wanting to stop. Your forefathers did the same thing and look at what it's caused. And they stood up and they said, just let us build for our livestock and for our families to stay and we will arm ourselves and we will fight with our brothers and sisters all the way to the other side of the Jordan and as far as the promised land is going to hold. This morning I tell you, we need each other. We, we need those times like last Sunday. We need those times where we just stand around and we all just wrap up in the side of each other and we feel that holy anointing, that presence of God just stir through us like a, like a whirlwind. But I also tell you, we need the support, Pastor Chris. We, we need to know that when I take this step, and even though you're in a good place in your season right now, you're in a time of fact. I am in a lean time. And, and, and while I'm in my lean time, I need some of that, some of that rendering to make mine taste that much better. I want to ask you, are you prepared to let all things go away? Let the past be the past. Let, 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 the, let the what's been be. And say, you know what? Today, I know we're in a new season and I know we're headed somewhere beautiful and I know it's going to take me, it's going to take pastor, it's going to take Facebook land, it's going to take everybody from coast to coast, denomination to denomination, move to move. Whatever your day of worship is to what it ain't, it's going to take us all to see the promised land. But if we were simply inside of our minds, get it on our hearts and say, you know what? I am going to carry the cluster today. I am going to use my shoulder and I'm going to team up with my brother or my sister and we're going to carry this thing together. And we're going to make stride and we're going to carry this into the camp because all of these berries have got to bust at some point. And when they all bust, we're not going to be able to tell whose juice is whose. Jesus. Mm. Heavenly Father, God, I ask, God, that your power, Father, and your presence in our life, Lord, God, that you would just let us together, Father. God, let us come together, Father. God, and let us walk into that promised land. Lord, I know that Jericho, Father, was on the other side of the Jordan when they did walk into the promised land in Joshua chapter 1. Father, you said let us go and let us walk and let us go over this Jordan. God, I ask this morning that you would let us cross this Jordan. God, let us cross into a new season, Father. God, but while we're crossing into this new season, God, let us have the Joshua and Caleb mindset, Father, that God, even though I've been here for 45 years, on this day I am strong enough, Father, God, that I can go in and I can come out, Father, in your name. God, that you would let the anointing be so heavy and so strong in our homes and in our families, in our marriages, Father, in the workplace, Father God, and in the house of God. Father God, that we'd feel you everywhere we go. Father God, in a season of uncertainty, in this season of uncertainty, God, that you would just be a beacon. God, that so that we can see the promised land come to light and we wouldn't have to wonder around for 40 years, Lord, before it comes to pass. In 
secure name I pray. If there's anybody that needs special prayer, there's no time like now. If there's anybody out there watching that don't know who we're talking about, the man named Jesus, I implore you to get on the phone, to call a pastor, call somebody that you have confidence in. Call us. If you don't have anybody, call us. Message us. And we, we would love to meet with you and we would love to pray with you and we would love to walk you into the kingdom. We would like to enter it. We would like to invite you to be a part of a family of God. Because the day, as the video said, that you walk in, the day that you call Him Father, you become a new creature in Him. I love you this morning. It is an awesome day. Let's not go back. Let's move forward. Let's see what God's got for us in all aspects of our lives.